Well, thank you. Aha. Uh -huh. Got it. Okay. We are now being recorded. Thank you. It was such a wonderful day, and you did such a great job, and I've had so many compliments on that. So before I forget, I want to thank you for all that. Thank well, you. You are more than welcome. Thank you. Okay. Now let's see where we are here. I think I have most of us that are on. We don't have any guests, as I assume, correct? No one signed up for this. That's right. All right. Um, let's go with staff reports first. Who would like to go first with staff reports? Okay, I'll start out. Um, we went through our annual health survey, which when we had our last meeting, we had been waiting for for over four months. Uh, they finally did come in. Um, we received 10 uh, deficiencies on the health side. Um, the average in the state right now is 14 and a half. They were all very, very low levels, which we're very thankful for. One example at the most, two examples under each one. Um, so that went pretty well. They're handing out a lot of IJs, they're handing out a lot of high level violations. Um, they also did another uh, focused infection control survey while they were here and no violations on that. Um, so we apparently have that, well, I shouldn't say it, we apparently have that down because we've gone through an awful lot of them now. Uh, but two weeks later, we had a life safety um, survey uh, that also went well. Uh, it appears to be all in all, it was about eight violations. Um, again, all pretty small things. It appears to be, um, more because they look at each building and give us a, a separate deficiency for each section of the building. So every deficiency is times five, just how they do it. Uh, and then yesterday we had a federal look behind survey, survey. So that means that, and on the life safety side, um, the feds actually come out to see what the state wrote us on and to take a look for themselves since they're paying the state to do their inspections. Um, again, we got, we, we got four little uh, deficiencies on that. I think probably by days on, most of those will be corrected. Um, and they will not write at times five the way the state does. Uh, so that went well. I guess there's nothing, nothing, um, made them decide to do a federal survey. I guess it's the first life safety code federal survey in the last 30 years. Um, so just your number comes up and at this time of year, they don't do a lot of traveling. Um, so they uh, keep people close to home and this guy was from Chicago. So he pretty much came out for that. So that went well. Um, we should be pretty much back in compliance with everything other than we have to wait for the deficiencies from yesterday. Um, our courtyard, I'm sorry, my phone's ringing. Uh, you gonna put this on silent? Anyway, uh, our courtyard sidewalks did get approved. So thank you everybody for that. Uh, they're moving quickly. Uh, we were given uh, an October 3rd start date. So they're hoping to get through it and get them done by the end of, you know, before winter sets in big time. Uh, and that'll be nice. So in the springtime, we can look at getting things replanted and everything. Uh, it'll be a really nice outside area for the residents coming up. And then Gus will go more into it, but we also got our point click care approved. So we're all excited about that to finally go electronic medical records. Um, the candy is gonna go more into where we are with COVID. Uh, one of the biggest concerns also kind of ties into our staffing issues, which is our number one concern. Um, we're waiting out, we're waiting for the uh, federal regulations to come out. I'm sure a lot, a lot of you heard, you know, the president talk about making it mandatory to be vaccinated to work in a nursing home um, with the end result, you know, unless you have a, a 
acceptable health or religious re reason, you have to be vaccinated. Uh, that is, of course, of concern. We'd love to see everybody vaccinated, but they're not. Uh, even though we try really hard to, you know, convince everybody we can. Um, that may, he may be backing off on that. We don't know. Uh, CDC came up with new regulations last Friday and the state's kind of going through them right now. But in the end, we have to wait for the federal regulations to find out where we're going to end up on that. Um, so they should be out this month, but we don't know. Um, we also gained approval for a resident attendant course. Um, that's a three-day course that one of our staff members will give and that allows um, us to train any staff member to do some basics, such as you know, assisting to feed a resident, combing hair, brushing teeth. Um, they don't count, they're not a certified nurse's aide, they can't do transfers and those types of things, but they can assist a nurse's aide since we are uh, you know, struggling to get nurse, nurse's aides to get some of the basics done. Uh, to take care of the resident. Um, so we'll be having those classes regularly if we can secure staff that are willing to take them. Um, our number one issue continues to be recruiting staff. It was tough before the pandemic. It's even tougher now. Um, we don't have one department that is fully staffed. We have a lot of um, managers working out on the floors and to make sure the care gets given, but that puts us behind the eight ball with doing a lot of the other documentation and um, programming and everything else we're required to do by the state. So we are struggling quite hard with, it, with that right now. Um, and any, uh, Chris, Chris you know, Morrissey is new with us here. Uh, she's coming up with some new ideas and any ideas anybody else has to try to assist us and um, getting staff and retaining staff. Uh, I know Dan and Candy have been working with uh, a couple of new staff members we have had and touching base with them daily, making sure they get a proper orientation, making sure somebody that is positive and friendly and good at what they do, orient them. Uh, a lot of nurses aides, especially newer nurses aides or even nurses that are used to hospital nursing or a smaller amount of patients to care for at once get a little overwhelmed when they get here and they have 25 patients to care for or to give medications to. So they're working hard to, you know, be there for the new people and have actually probably saved a couple of people from not, from not, you know, staying on, on the job by uh, assisting them and mentoring them, you know, till they get used to being in long-term care. Uh, and that's mainly what I had to report. Uh, if Chris wants to maybe go from there, that's our new HR person. She can give you an idea of some of the things she's trying to do. Pat, I'm going to interrupt for one minute. Um, Candy and, and uh, Dan, I'm really proud of you doing the hand by hand, holding hands. Uh, working with these people when they come in because frustration is the worst thing and they walk out the door and you never see them again. And so it's so important to all new employees that you do a hand, hold their hands, walk them through because it is a different place for them to work. And uh, our residents are something special and I'm real proud of both of you taking that effort to do that. Thank you. I'm sorry, who is next? <laughs> Um, I'm going to go next. Okay, so, thank you. Thank you. Um, so I have been coming up with some new ideas for recruiting. Um, obviously, the the originals, you know, pushing those um, referrals. And um, I've reached out to KMK Media, uh, hoping to get uh, some information on making a couple of videos for YouTube, our, our website, and other postings out there, video testimonies of employees that, you know, started here in dietary or as a unit attendant and worked up to become a CNA and then a nurse. And, you know, our DON today started out as a CNA here. 
um, get some videos of employees that worked up the ladder, video testimonies from residents uh, to put out there on YouTube, a video of the grounds here at River Bluff, maybe a video of uh, some of the services that we provide here in action, advertising possibly on city buses for employment opportunities, um, a nice brochure for job fairs and colleges to hand out with our mentioned benefits. We have some phenomenal benefits. Um, you know, pensions are uh, few and far between, and you know, it's it's a nice perk on top of a retirement fund here. Um, looking at uh, some media outlets right now to to advertise possibly on radio. TV is very expensive, so um, Pam at uh, KMK suggested some radio advertising, and she has reached out to a couple of different places for some pricing, and she's waiting on pricing to come back right now. And then she's going to come out and meet with Pat and I and go over our options and what's available to us and uh, to stay within our budget. Um, also, another initiative I'd like to put out there is having a on-site open house slash career fair here in October. Um, you know, putting some big balloons out in front and attracting people to come in and, you know, and see us. Uh, we're kind of hidden off the road. So, you know, I hear a lot of people say, oh, is that place that, you know, where I'm working, is that place on Main Street? Yeah, um, we're way back there off the road and we're not seen that well. So, um, you know, I, I want to get the word out that we're here and, you know, that we do good work here and we're here to serve the community and um, there for, for the community. So. And if anybody has any ideas, you know, definitely throw them my way. I'm willing and open to listen to anything and everybody. So thanks. Okay, who's next? Hey. The COVID update. Sure, I'm, I'm echoing. Turn you off. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So in. Um, we were, we were open until August and we had a shutdown because we had a couple positive staff members and a positive resident. So our last positive was on 816. We ended up closing for about three and a half weeks and we opened up again on the 31st. Um, we've not had any more positives. We are open again for visitation with rules depending on the vaccination status of the resident and the rules change about every other week with the state. So we're Pat said we're currently waiting on them to verify um, what they want us to do this week. So uh, we have 93.8% of our residents are vaccinated and about 65% of our staff are vaccinated. Um, we are still pushing for staff vaccination. Um, we have monthly vaccine clinics that are continuing and again waiting on the guidelines from the federal government to know whether we are going to mandate or not. Any questions? Sounds good. Anything else? What Dan, was that? How, are you all done, can, um, Candy? Yep, that's it. All right, Dan, where are you at? Do you have anything to say at this time? He must have left us. No, oh, there he's he is. There. I see him. I see him. <laughs> He's unmuting. Can you hear me? <laughs> nope, can't hear you yet. I forgot to mention that Dan and I are going to a career fair on Thursday. Hey, where's that at? Uh, Rock Bar River College, Rock Valley. Rock Valley College? Yes. Good. Oh, <laughs> can you guys hear me now? I can yeah. hear you. Okay. Um, so we are, we, we discussed this at the last meeting. We, we're currently working with three outside providers that uh, have special services that come into the facility. Uh, one being Dr. Fida's group. He, he's, he has a psychiatric group and he is seeing 48 of our residents. Um, another group is our skilled wound care group. 
uh, which is Dr. Adengay, and he comes and he sees about 10 of our residents at this point, but he's just starting, so we're hoping to get him uh, more clients. But, you know, the less clients he has, the better, because that means the facility has less wounds. So, you know, we don't want to give them too many. Um, another group that we're bringing in is the Cardio Renal Therapeutics Group, which is going to help with uh, keeping our, our residents here and treating them here instead of sending them to the hospital for rehospitalization. Um, so each of those groups are going to help improve uh, at least one of our STAR ratings. Uh, the psychiatric group can uh, obviously, of course, help with our psychiatric or our antipsychotic um, rating. Uh, the wound care can help with the pressure, uh, pressure wounds rating, and the uh, renal therapeutics can help with the rehospitalization. So hopefully, uh, having these groups on board is going to bring our star rating up. That's that's my goal. Thank you, Dan. That's good. You guys have any questions? No? Apparently not. Next. Tim and Laura, you guys want to go? Okay, I will go. Um, this uh, last month was a very busy month for us. We had 92 referrals. So we're getting them a little bit, a lot of them from Chicago, we, uh, Chicago land area, but there are behavioral health uh, facilities. So we don't do too many psych um, deal with admitting psych residents. So we accepted out of those 92, we admitted 16. Um, then we accepted nine. Uh, 57 of them we were unable to meet due to psychic, psych background, or we were unable to manage their medication due to the uh, medical care was more expensive than outweighed the benefit of bringing them in. So we have a couple of those, like new traits and stuff like that. We admitted three people out of the county to our building. So that was a good uh, factor without being, in, without being in Winnebago County area. We discharged five back to the community. We have no death in August. And our total census is today is 145. Okay. We're getting quite a lot more short-term people. Um, that are also uh, Medicare. So even though we're, it's, we're still having a bit of a rough time with the census and want yeah. people to take care of people, the, a lot of the residents we're getting in are Medicare. Yeah. So your yeah. reimbursement is, a, is at a much higher rate than a, a public aid resident. So and we're not getting too many private pay, is that it? Correct. But we also, um, Freeport Hospital is actually sending us COVID residents as well. So we have two that we're receiving from them. Beloit Hospital is actually going to start sending us COVID residents because we're the only facility that at this time accepting COVID uh, residents. And Rochelle just called saying that they will send, um, when their COVID patients are ready, they will send them our way as well. So we have three out of county hospitals are working with us, sending us residents. And where do we put state. those residents? Ma'am? Where do we put those residents? We don't mix them in with our others, correct? No, ma'am. They go to our COVID neighborhood, which we will put them on quarantine until they pass their quarantine dates. Okay. And then if they, if they don't pass, then what? Oh, they usually come out within a 14-day matter. Okay. And they are usually Medicare during that period of time. Uh, they're very, we're set up beautifully to have total isolation uh, from the rest of our, our residents and they stay where they are. And, you know, they usually within 14 days or so get strong enough. There are mainly people that have been vaccinated that are breakthrough cases. Uh, so they're people that had their vaccines, still got sick, went to the hospital for a short period of time. Uh, once they get to five liters of oxygen or less, then we can take them, let them get stronger, then they go home. It's a lot more in and out paperwork, but you know, again, they're Medicare patients, so that helps balance that out. Are we getting very many hospice um, patients, or aren't we? Are we still doing that? 
but we're not getting that many referrals from hospitals, just a few. Um, anything Laura, else? I don't know Sorry. if Laura could explain or could explain that anymore because we have we have had quite a bit less hospice. Do you have any comment on that, Laura? You know, I worked with hospice. Um, you know what they're looking for is they're looking for us to give them referrals and then they'll give you referrals back. You know, so the more people we put on hospice in the house, the more you're going to get from them. Any particular agency that you're working with like that? You know what, we work with, I think, every hospice in Rockford. I think we have a contract with all of them. So touch and base with all of them, Angie, pretty much. Very good. All right. And Laura, I, you want to tell them what you have planned? Oh, yep, I think it's my turn. Um, <laughs> I think the biggest thing right now is we are doing a new brochure for River Bluff. I've been working with KMK on that. Um, I should have a preview of the new brochure for the next meeting. Um, updating everything on our new name, which is River Bluff Health and Rehabilitation. So trying to get that all um, in place and promoting it as well. Um, we have an active Facebook page. We had our biggest views in August. There was 3,907 views in August on River Bluff's Facebook page. Um, River Bluff will be joining Lifescape Senior Expo this Saturday. It is a very big expo. They have about 100 vendors. We do have a booth at that. Um, it's from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. We also did an advertisement in the senior resource book that is given away at that and it is sent out to the seniors in the community also. And I worked with KMK for the advertisement on that. And then for Halloween, we're going to do a jack o lantern spectacular with the community. We have asked all our vendors and partners to join in with us. They will be carving pumpkins and then we will light up River Bluffs parking lot on October 29th from 6 p.m. to 8 a.m. for community drive through and each kid in the car will get a bag of candy um, at the end of the drive through Just to get community involved, get them out, get them in River Bluff. With the Senior Expo, where is that going to be held at? That is at the Rock Valley College. Okay. And is it will that... be outside. They will not let it be inside, so it will be outside on their walking path. All right. Did, did we have any problems with people not coming because we had ours on the walking path? Was it hard for many to not to be able to come because they can't walk that distance or have you someone know, to... We had about 200 people. Um, I think um, what I learned from it the most, I don't think it was bad having it on the walking path. We just need more seating in between the vendors so that they okay. can rest. That sounds good. Well, the location is excellent because they'll come from all over since it's so close to I-90, if they if they go out into Winnebago County and advertise this or into the other counties, uh, we should be able to bring some people in. Who knows? Right. Thank you. Thank you. And next, our department is actually you know stretched a little thin like everybody else here. We've been a person short for about a month, but uh, we're keeping up with the financials. Our collections are up, our billings are up, um, our receivables are down, because I know that was a big one. We've written off like $1.8 million. And we just found out that Cures is going to release more money. I don't know the amount yet, but we'll get our piece of the pie, I promise. Okay, so you got, at least you got some of that debt written off. Yeah, absolutely. Do they have a plan to do so much uh, periodically to get that uh, that debt down? Yeah, as, as much as we can dig in and make sure it's absolutely not collectible monies, we're, we're writing it off as we go. Um, and I'm sure we'll write off at least another million dollars before year end, before we do Baker and Tilly audit. I hear that because since we have our attorney here today, we've been complaining, complaining about we need a policy 
so to know how we can write that off and get all that bad debt that will never be collected off of our books. And I'll com keep complaining every time I have an opportunity to get all that debt that will never, ever be collected off of our books. And if we have to write policies, so be it. Then we need our legal to get started with us in order to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Mr. Lofgren, anything else? No, not right now. Is there any way we can help you? No, I appreciate it. We're, uh, like I said, if, if we could get somebody to fill that empty position, but uh, that's, we haven't had very many people apply to it so far. Which empty position is it? Uh, it's an account tech position um, to do the, uh, the receivables and some of the collections and things like that. On a person like that, do we really need to have an attorney do that? So that if they're going to have to send out notices to people, are we able to do that? Say we're going to take oh, you to court? Yeah, yeah. Our policy lets us do it um, unless it's like where we give them the 30-day uh, notice to vacate. Then we have to send it to the state's attorney. But we have, we have a law firm to do collections for us if it's questionable. Um, Markoff Law in Chicago, and then um, you know we've been we've been collecting monies that we haven't gotten a dime from people for a long time, and they're starting to pay us now because it's just we I, I don't think we ever paid much attention to it in the past. I appreciate you going working with that and digging into it because that's where our problem has been. I know in the past, um, actually you don't have enough staff there to do collections. And that should be done by professionals to begin with. And uh, I understand where you're coming from on that one. Thank you. Thank you. You just keep doing that. Okay. Yeah. Do you realize by the middle of next year we'll have a lot of that bad death gone if you keep doing what you're doing? Agreed. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Who's next? Pat, Pat uh, Thompson, did you want to jump in with anything? Uh, no, Angie, not at this point. Um, I think things are, are going pretty well. Um, the one question I had was on the staffing. I know that there was some discussion about um, reconfiguring the amount of dollars that we spend on contracted nursing services versus yeah. our own in-house um, nursing staff. And so we were looking at, um, you know, the, the possibility of increasing some of the wages of our nursing staff. Um, and Mark did a, a pretty nice report that shows that um, we could save some considerable dollars uh, by using internal staffing with a you know, a modest increase in wages versus the amount of money that uh, we're paying for contracted nursing services. And so I think we really need to look at that going forward. I know that it it's a complicated issue and it needs to be worked out with the um, collective bargaining arrangement, but I think it's something we should pursue because we're spending a lot of money on contracted nursing services, and I think we could do better with our own internal staff, and I think it would help with recruitment. The other thing is I understand that because we are a government facility, we cannot do bonuses to hire people on, and that's all you see anymore advertised is uh, we'll give you a bonus if you sign on. They don't say for how long you have to sign on, though. But that's something that if there's a way of working around that, and if you have any other suggestions, maybe you or Dave, and uh, get along, get with Mark and see if there isn't some other way that we can entice people financially, because you know it's all about the money. And if they can make two dollars better someplace else, that's where they quit and go. They don't stay. Um, and, and see if we can't um, come up with some type of of I, I, we can't use the word bonus, that's not what it is, but uh, some other method of enticing people to come there since we're in real heavy competition with that because the private industry can, can promise them all the bonuses, 
doesn't mean they're going to stay there that long, but uh, that seems to be the name of the game right now. So perhaps you financial people can take a look at that and see if there is anything that we can do that doesn't have the word bonus tied to it. Right. It that is. Was- it really is. It really is a problem. Um, and also, I hope uh, that increase includes the CNAs because um, not only nurses but CNAs are now getting bonus sign-on bonuses too. And usually, it's a two-year commitment with a sign-on bonus. You're absolutely right. And if right, we can, right. it- when I when I say nursing staff, I mean you all. know, big picture nursing, CNA, nurses, all, yeah. all, the, all of them. In fact, it's all our employees, because even the kitchen, mm-hmm. the, the janitors, yes. you know, all of them. Um, we don't want to, those that have been with us for especially a period of time, we don't want to lose them. We want mm-hmm. to hang on to those, those experienced people, too. That's right. We have to, the young ones perhaps will go for the education and us going forward with education with them. But the long-term staff we've had, we want to keep them. Will any of you come up with some good ideas, pass it on. It's it's so very important for us because it, it puts us in a really hazardous position. I mean, we're fine now, we, you know, we, we're, we're, we, we have over minimum staffing, you know, we comply with public health, but to continue to grow, we need to have the staff, you know, and we need to have the cooks. You know, my food service director has been cooking all week, you know, and it, it just, we need to have these people in place to get better, you know, to, to, to get to the point that we're self-sufficient we need the residents in, but we need the staff to take care of the residents. And that has gotten even worse than it was before, which is hard to believe, but it, it truly has. I think that's it for staff reports, right, Pat? Yes, it is. Okay. Gus, uh, did, Gus did, I don't know if Gus wanted to say Are you ready? Somebody, I'm sorry, I cut myself off for a minute. Do we want to go on to the next item then, Angie? Yes, we do. Okay. And that's Gus and company? That is Gus and company. Uh, You're right. Thank you, Chairman Goral. Uh, uh, Angie Danielson has been with us now for 15 hours and 13 minutes. <laughs> and, and as our healthcare information technology administrator. Uh, Angie, why don't you uh, just give uh, Angie Goral and the rest, uh, others have heard some of your background, but go ahead. Angie Goral would probably uh, appreciate a little background on you. Would you go ahead? Thank you. Sure, Um, I got my bachelor's in science from Western Illinois University, and I have a master's in physician assistant studies from Midwestern University in Downers Grove. So I'm excited to sort of tackle this project. Um, I'm hoping to increase our revenue, decrease our liability, and become compliant with IDPH in regards to electronic medical records. Thank you. Excellent, excellent. And uh, so both Angie and Michaela will jump in as I uh, just let you know where we're at. We got approved last Thursday with the uh, old $297,000 worth of ARP dollars to expand the utilization of point click care. Uh, I've got hardware uh, I've got to get ordered. And unfortunately my report on any kind of hardware, computers, network equipments, lead times are long. And uh, I think everyone on the call knows there's a, a chip shortage worldwide. Yes, we get caught up in it with uh, technology components. Um, I believe Angie received the contract today, Michaela, for uh, Angie Danielson to look over. Yes. And we uh, are beginning, uh, well, Angie's doing uh, shadowing throughout the nursing home to get a feel for the business. 
and uh, uh, sometime this week we'll get with Point Click Care uh, and Angie will get uh, set up as a point of contact. Uh, we have a list of uh, how many uh, working team members, Michaela? Could you share that screen? Roughly about 15. Um, let me pull it up here, sorry. If you can, I will. Oh, I got it. I just need to do a quick, just gonna pull it up here. All right. Yep. Share, share. We've only been fighting for this point click care for about 10 years. Uh, it's a time in the making. Those of you who remember know we've been fighting for this for a long time. And I'm so happy to see that coming to fruition. Hey, I see you all shaking your head. You know we've been fighting for that for a long time. So here's the list of folks on the working team and a uh, little IT heavy with uh, Angie, myself, uh, Michaela, and Dan, but we thought that'd be helpful to come out of the box. Uh, we have not initialized the PC working team uh, yet. My hope is we'll do that next week. And uh, I think that's a quick recap, Angie. Uh, again, we just got approved last Thursday, um, but we're uh, going to rock and we're going to roll. And let me... Go ahead. I appreciate that. Uh, Michaela, anything else from you? Angie Danielson, anything else from you? Nothing from me. Thank you. And you're done, Gus? Yes, and you know we, we appreciate the opportunity to be helpful out at uh, RBNH. Uh, I'm with, uh, with Pat Says, I mean, it's such a, you know, that service we provide to our community is huge. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you card, the board too for finally getting this thing through after 10 years. And um, we'll show them how, in fact, it's over 10 years. We'll show them how successful we're going to be with that. Uh, Pat Thompson, do you have, or, or maybe a brown person, where is, uh, I can't see him. Oh, there we you are. Have Dave, we have Dave Rickert and I Mark Lofgren can update us on the financials. Mark's already done a little bit of that, but Dave might want to add something to it. Yes, hi everybody, a good conversation. I did want to mention that we worked very hard uh, working with Mark Lofgren and, and Pat McDermott to identify uh, critical capital asset areas where we wanted to focus on. So there are funds being made available both for SIP and ARP to address key issues most notably and, uh, for the nursing home is point click care. So our goal is to provide you all the resources you need to be successful, but ultimately it's up to staff to, to make the determination. And, and you know, we're gonna provide you all the necessary tools we can for to assist with that. So that's kind of where we're at. We do regular reports to the County Finance Committee. And uh, like I said, we're gonna give uh, every opportunity for success to the, the nursing home. And, you know, we understand you're working in a very difficult situation with COVID. But like I said, we're at least providing you the necessary tools we think you need in order to be successful. Appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, Jaime, are you there anywhere that you can talk? I sure, sure am. Would you like to chime in on any of this? No, just uh, listening from my first meeting here, just want to get a good understanding on what um, is talked about, discussed. Obviously, you know, the biggest concern is trying to make sure that uh, we can become viable. Uh, I know that uh, with Mr. Thompson and Mr. Rickard trying to push on some of the incentives uh, relating to the accounts receivable, obviously there's some challenges that we have there, but uh, being on the finance committee, you know, it's always one of those things that uh, we, we kind of look at just to make sure. And I'm happy to be here um, to provide any feedback that I may have or, you know, listen to different perspective ideas and trying to see what we can do and work closely with Mr. Rickard and Thompson and Pat to, you know, address some of these challenges that we currently have. But Ultimately, the goal is, from my perspective, is um, to support you guys in any shape or form that I can. I'm not here to dictate, to uh, tell you how to operate your, your facility. Um, uh, that is your responsibility. That is your job. 
And so I'm here more as a facilitator listener and also uh, the ability to question, challenge you guys on different perspectives um, and initiatives that obviously could, you know, bring some um, improvement within the nursing home. Obviously, it's a, it's a viable option that we have out there for citizens and constituents. Um, I hear good things all the time about uh, River Bluff Nursing Home. So I'm excited to be part of this uh, committee. Um, hopefully, you know, as we gear down and um, move forward, I, I really would like to see what the strategic plans are going forward um, and trying to have objectives and goals on a yearly basis to essentially benchmark and see what we can do and look out outside the industry, uh, within the industry, but outside of River Bluff to see if there's anything that we can use to um, obviously improve or bring in that all ultimately will, will lead us to our goal, which is obviously, you know, our in, whole intent is to make sure that we somehow break even and uh, is self sustainable um, and, you know, with the taxpayers dollars. So that's really, you know, what I'm here. Um, I'm, I'm excited to hear the energy going around with the new hires and different initiatives that you guys are taking on board. Uh, I encourage you to continue to do so. Um, I'm here for your support. Same with Angie Goro. Uh, she's a very, very big advocate of River Bluff Nursing Home. So just uh, for being the first meeting for me, um, I'm excited to hear what your thoughts are and just kind of listen in a little bit and hopefully we can continue to work together and, and hopefully we can make good positive change uh, for River Bluff and obviously make it a lot better, the service out there. Thank you. Thanks, Jaime. Uh, I have one more thing I'd like to, um, under uh, other business to bring up. And is it is it too hard to meet every month or would you like to meet, and I'm talking to all of you, so this isn't even a quorum thing, or is it just easier to do this every other month and did you want me to keep it at 3.30 in the afternoon? Any objections? Do you want it every month or every other month? Speak up. This is Gus. Um, I would suggest monthly for the next six months uh, uh, with our emphasis on point-click care uh, from admissions to, uh, is it called chart closure? Uh, and so from admissions to chart closure, my sense is we wanna keep our uh, tabs on our progress on point click care adaptation. That's, that's my suggestion. I agree. I think that's a good suggestion, Angie. So why don't we uh, go every month? Uh, I think the 3.30 time slot is good. Sounds good to me. I think we lost Angie for a minute. You did lose me. I had to unmute myself because my phone, I talk on my house phone and that phone started ringing. I didn't think you wanted to be part of that. But no, I'm right here and uh, let's do that. Let's do it for the, what, the next six months. Let's try that. Okay. And that way you can, at that time too, um, I don't know, uh, Pat, have, uh, Pat McDermott, have you and your staff have anything set for goals or, um, you know, a, 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 for the future, or are we just right now doing a day-by-day -day trying to keep alive? Well, before the pandemic, our goal was to hit that 200 mark with 200, 210, with 10 to 15 people within there, within those numbers being Medicare. Um, and to have no agency here or very, very minimal agency, because we know we can assure better care when we're using our own staff um, to be in a position where we can make sure our staff are the best we can possibly have taking care of our residents and not just somebody that walks in from an agency and doesn't have the commitment to the facility. Uh, those were our goals. Uh, and unfortunately with COVID, now we're kind of back to hanging on for dear life and just trying to make it work. You know, which everybody or a lot of, a lot of buildings are right, right now. We want 
happened. Yeah, it's all across the country. And we just had a very good example of when agency is taking care of our residents, what could happen, and then lawsuits come about. So, yes, we need to stay away from as much agency as we can, and you're absolutely right. The staff there are... Actually, you're more than caretakers. You're their moms, their dads, and they're, you know you, you you love those those residents. It, it takes special people like you to be able to work in a nursing home because they're there daily. We're in a hospital; they're in and out. You don't have that same rapport, and they get to their families. I've talked to their families, and they just love the staff out there that is so diligent and and keeps up with them all the time. They just you know, you, you you can't be beat, so don't go away. You stay where you are. Would you please? But anything else to talk about, Pat? Did you want to bring up any other thing? Either one of you, Pat. No, I think you covered it well, Angie, and thanks for being such a great advocate of River Bluff. Well, you don't know this, but I've always told them out there that I have my reservations and when that day comes. You know that, don't you? <laughs> There's no better place. That's right. I've already told my kids that's where I go. So they're not going to keep me home. But anyway, uh, you all have a wonderful uh, night and enjoy, and we'll do the best we can to keep you where you are, and you, you do your end, and we're going to try real hard to keep our end. Anything else that needs to be said? Would you like to adjourn? Jamie, Jaime, would you like to adjourn? I so move to adjourn. And I'll second it. So good night, everyone. We'll be talking to you. Thank you. Thank you. See you later. Thank you, everyone. Uh, hope we get to meet on one-on-one. -on -one.